Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Jay Gilbert. Usually I'm joined by Mike Branvold, but he's out this week. He'll be back next week. This week, we have a great guest. We have Will Griggs, who's the Chief Experience Officer for a new company called Hi-Fi. You're going to want to stick through this because he really shares some great information about how you can get a grip on all of your revenue streams with your music. Uh, before we get going, I want to thank our sponsors, Bruce Houghton over at HypeBot. Thank you, Bruce. We appreciate all the uh, support. We want to thank our friends over at Bandzoogle. Bandzoogle was built by musicians for musicians. It's an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to build a beautiful website and EPK for your music. Bandzoogle powers the websites for tens of thousands of musicians around the world, from weekend warriors to Grammy winners. All the features you need for a professional website are already built right in. Hosting, custom, custom domain names, dozens of fully customizable design templates, tools to sell your music and merch commission-free, commission-free crowdfunding and fan subscription features, mailing list tools to help you grow your fan list and send newsletters, social media integrations, and live Live support from their musician friendly team seven days a week. Music Biz Weekly podcast listeners can go to bandzoogle.com, try it for free for 30 days, use the promo code Music Biz Weekly to get 15% off your first year of any subscription. That's Music Biz Weekly, one word. Uh, we'd also like to thank Disc Makers. We all know it's a digital world out there, uh, but it's still important for. Uh, physical media in today's for today's independent musician. Digital royalty payments are so small that selling products like CD, vinyl, t-shirts at gigs has become an important income generator, income generator. And now it's even more important with live streams. So for every CD you sell on a live stream or at a show, you'd roughly need 3000 streams to make up the same amount of money. That's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even t-shirts. So here's the offer that we'd like to give you. Get free shipping on CD orders of 100 or more from Disc Makers. Just use the code FREEBIZ. That's one word, FREEBIZ, and that's up to $150 value. So check out this interview with Will Griggs. I think you're going to find it very interesting. This platform is kind of cutting edge and really solves a problem that we've had in the industry for a while, and that's staying on top of all of your revenue streams for your music. Build a stunning band website in minutes with Bandzoogle. Go to bandzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Today we're joined by Will Griggs, Chief Experience Officer with Hi-Fi. Will, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jay. I'm really happy to be here. Appreciate the invite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's dive right in. I read this article um, in Forbes and the headline was Startup Hi-Fi Tracks Music Artist Royalties Revenue and Helps Put It in Their Pocket. So this has been such a big deal um, in the music industry lately because the industry is going from one of kind of ownership to access. And look, we're all afraid of things we don't understand. And what it sounds like with Hi-Fi is you're starting to kind of create some transparency across some of this thing. But before we kind of get there, I'd love to know more about Hi-Fi, but tell us a little bit about uh, Will and, and how did you end up in this uh, crazy business? Sure, yeah. Um, well, I've worn a lot of different hats across the industry. I think like a lot of people, I you know got really involved in my local music scene. I grew up outside Washington, DC in uh, the suburbs in Arlington, Virginia. And maybe it was like the trickle down effect of, you know, the discord record sort of ethos. But when I was in high school, I did everything I could to just get involved in music and putting together concerts in my own garage or church oh, basements cool. or whatever it was. And that was the first time I really got a taste of like the political side because we would have these seven band bills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I book the show, my band's going to get a good spot, like third or fourth. And then the right. band who brought the PA from wherever is gets the fifth spot. And then, okay, your band only has three songs. So you're playing first. But anyway, so 
Um, you know, from there, I came to New York. I was in the music business program at NYU. And when I was uh, at NYU with a couple of friends, uh, we put together uh, a record label called Cantora Records. And uh, we worked with some amazing artists, put out the first release by MGMT. Oh, very um, cool. Early what releases year, from- roughly was this? What, what? That was in 2005. Okay. So we put out an EP called Time to Pretend. It had, you know, kids, Time to Pretend, a bunch of songs that, you know, have really struck a chord and you'll still hear on the radio. And, you know, it's amazing that we were able awesome. to work with artists like like those guys and Francis and Delights and Bare Hands and many other artists who, you know, have, have been able to, you know, reach a lot of people. And- Yeah, uh, very cool. But alongside that, always was producing live events, um, both as a way to promote our own acts, but also as a way to collaborate with other folks, um, which led to, you know, I was booking venues in New York, including Brooklyn Bowl for the first couple of years that they were open up in Williamsburg, uh, working with Pete Shapiro and, and Josh Moore and some really amazing people. Um, and more recently, I oversaw the cultural programming at the Public Hotel in the Lower East Side in Manhattan. Um, but also along the way uh, with Cantora, we were investing in tech startups. This is like in 2009, 2010, just off our balance sheet and working with entrepreneurs the same way that, you know, we were working with musicians and artists, which is finding brilliant people early on and giving them the resources that we had at, at our disposal to sure. help turn those ideas into businesses. And, you know, we were working with startups. I mean, this is before Spotify had a presence in the States, before every sure. major label and a management company had some sort of speculative investment vehicle. And uh, people thought that we were crazy, which was not entirely wrong. But, <laughs> you know, we were able to have a seat at the table along like very, you know, established VCs because yeah. we could we could do things in terms of the strategic value of building events. And, you know, if it was an app, you know, the app is your ticket to the show. So everyone there has that technology running. We could use real life data, build it into case studies, turn into decks that they could raise money against and help sort of, you know, build uh, their teams and build their businesses that way. Yeah. And Damian Manning, who's the CEO at HiFi, who has been very involved both as an entrepreneur and an investor uh, in, you know, a lot of spheres, but in music and technology and the intersection of those things, um, we met back then um, when we were both working with the same technology as investors. And um, long story short, the label was acquired in 2015. And when we reconnected and he was sharing his ideas around sort of the big gap in the market that he saw, which totally resonated with me as well, especially being through a lot of the fires myself mm -hmm. um, as an operator, the big gap that we saw was on the financial side of the industry That's right. because there are so many ways to distribute your music and create your music and promote your music. It seemed like everything had gone to light speed except for the financial side where, you know, you have sometimes up to 10 different partners that are paying you on different cycles um, for different yeah. rights. And the data that's attached to that revenue is sitting, you know, most of the time in some very powerful, you know, portals, but these walled gardens of individual slices of the pie. And, um, you know, we set about, you know, building an organization that could be powered by our members that could address the most pressing issues um, on the financial side of the yeah. equation, which yeah. um, Lord knows there's room for improvement. <laughs> oh my gosh, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of where the industry is trending in a lot of different areas is more transparency, you know, um, even though at its core, it's still about creativity and, and all of these things that you were talking about. I love what you were saying about business development, because that is one of the most exciting areas of the music industry and maybe even every industry is when you get pitched ideas and you look into these ideas and sometimes they're uh, solutions in search of a problem. And sometimes like what it sounds like with hi-fi, 
it is a solution to a problem and and neither is necessarily good or bad they're just a couple of different ways of looking at it and what was interesting to me about hi-fi and, and we'll dig in a little bit about you know the functionality and, and some of these things is just with financial transparency in general for anyone who's ever seen a statement you know from an artist it's it's pretty overwhelming these days it's it's much more complex than it used to be right i mean now you have even with streaming let's put away or put aside for a second downloads and put away uh, aside for a second physical sales but looking at streaming it's not that simple and you've got ad supported you know you've got some of these uh ones that are full subscription some of them that are you know college discounted or family discounted and it goes on and on and on and you look at these statements and there's so much either misinformation or confusion surrounding that so let's let's talk about how does hi-fi kind of take all of these disparate all of these different revenue sources and kind of make some sense of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I, what you said about, you know, you can go about creating a problem to solve or see a problem that, that you go about solving. Um, you know, we definitely fall into that latter category. And, you know, even in the earliest days, you know, always um, speak to as many decision makers across as many different areas of the industry as possible to make sure that the things that we're developing and working on are matching up with the most pressing financial needs of our members. And our members are all, and just to be clear, HiFi is the financial rights organization for the music industry. And our members consist of all kinds of industry professionals, a lot of managers, artists, but also business managers, and anyone who is tracking and earning royalty income uh, yeah. in music is a great candidate um, to, to be a member. And uh, there's no cost uh, to be a member of HiFi. You can apply at our website, which is hi.fi. How'd you get that com. URL? That's just crazy. <laughs> like the you best know, I, URL ever. How did you get that? Short, short and sweet. You know, it was available and uh, wow. we, we, we jumped on it. Um, and our members get access to services that we've tailored specifically for the music industry. Okay. And um, the first service that we rolled out uh, is the Hi-Fi Royalties Dashboard. And essentially, after you've applied for membership and been approved, um, you can get access to the royalties dashboard at no cost as a member. And um, it's a mobile app. You install it onto your phone. You select the services that you want to link across distribution, performing rights, um, publishing, uh, and use your existing credentials to sign in. And we've automated the process of pulling that information from all these disparate sources into one holistic dashboard that shows you not only the big picture of, you know, here's how much you've earned across all these royalty streams in the last 12 months, but also, you know, month by month breakdowns, uh, breakdowns by royalty type. You can see how individual tracks are performing across wow. those royalty streams. So you're not just comparing uh, within, you know, the DSPs of Spotify versus Apple or Amazon or any others, but you can actually see how Spotify matches up with SiriusXM or any of these entities that's having a financial impact on your career. Wow. And, and for us, you know, a couple of the, the, you know, big takeaways from our conversations early on was that, you know, to have that level, that holistic viewpoint um, was really valuable because right now uh, managers and artists are faced so many with different sources. either the decision of checking in on these things mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to keep up with this sort of constellation of partners and the dizzying array of data that's flying at them on an ongoing basis, or what ends up happening a lot of times is that folks don't look at those things because there's so much friction around keeping uh, a real time or even close to real time viewpoint on those earnings. And it puts artists and managers in a very precarious and any rights holders into a very precarious situation where even the most successful folks sometimes don't know 
the next time they're getting paid, how much that's going to be for, what their biggest months were, why that was happening. So for us, it was really important to not only pull that information into one place, but to present it in a way that was intuitive and easy for anyone. You don't have okay. to, you know, be an M have an MBA or be a CPA to navigate yeah. the dashboard. Um, but you can get really valuable insights. And, you know, we don't say, okay, so take this deal or don't take that deal. We're just, just equipping you with info. a full deck of cards to navigate and make, make the best informed decisions for your career. And then that, the, that, uh, dashboard, that data engine is what really drives the other services that we offer, including cash flow, which is our working capital product, which we can get to in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely. But we also really, um, you know, embrace the idea of this organization as a community. And we have ongoing member uh, events. Obviously, those have been virtual this year. We bring in, you know, <laughs> thought leaders and decision makers across the industry to really give actionable insights into, you know, their experiences and what they're working on and really try to That's accelerate the valuable. learning curve yeah. as well around those things. Because especially with live music on hold, unfortunately, obviously since March and yeah. into next year, and we're all, you know, knock on wood, hopeful about vaccines and, you know, the mm -hmm. fact that things can get yeah. back on track in terms of live, but a lot of folks are in a position now where there's, they're really focused more on the royalty earnings than they have been in the past because sure. what was the cherry on the Sunday this year has been the Sunday. Exactly. Yeah, that's a really um, good point. And, and I think that when you're talking about events, one of the things I was reading about, which I thought was really fascinating, is workshops. Because what you're talking about when you get to royalties, and we should touch on this a little bit, when it comes to publishing versus the master, it sounds simplistic, but it's one of those areas, as you mentioned, that hasn't been a focus for a lot of artists, managers, and even business managers to a certain degree. And now to your point, it is a main focus of all of that. Can, can we just kind of back up it? Let's, let's talk about, you know, publishing and, and master um, the difference between the two and how you work with both of those. Sure. Absolutely. Well, you know, the, just a simple breakdown for uh, for anyone who uh, may not sort of yes. know the different types of rights that are generated by a recording versus the idea of a song. Um, you know, the master side is really the the recording as it happens in the studio, and that recording could be a song that you wrote. It could be a song that someone else wrote and has been recorded by hundreds of other artists, but it really is the, the sound capture of that recording is the master. Um, and the publishing side is the idea of the song. It's, you know, you could think of it almost like the notes on the page. Yesterday by the Beatles is a classic example of a song that has been recorded by many different artists, but, you know, as that recording of yesterday is uh, being monetized, it obviously makes a big difference on the master side and the publishing side, whether or not you're listening to the original Beatles recording or any of the cover versions yeah. that the thousands of cover versions that followed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you're, and the music industry is very unique in that it's one of the few where the different rights that you create as an artist, whether you're just writing songs, you're writing and recording those songs, you're collaborating with other people and all the different ways that those rights are monetized, you have all sort of this, um, uh, this, this collection of partners that is collecting revenue for all these different rights. Right. So that's why it's essential that if you are creating music um, you know, you need to make sure that all the partners are in place to make sure that you're not missing any links in the chain. Absolutely. Um, so for instance, you know, check out and see, should you be signed up with a performing rights organization who's going to be collecting the performance rights of any public performance? And that's expressed itself in many ways, uh, mm -hmm. whether, you know, from radio to TV to, you know, your song being played in a cafe. Right. Um, and you're talking about like an ASCAP, BMI, ASCAP, CSAC. BMI, CSAC. Um, and if you, you know, should be signed up with Sound Exchange, who collects the performance royalties that are generated through online radio and other yeah. digital performances. Um, you know, you need to make sure, and that's one thing that even just through the process of firing up a hi-fi dashboard, 
um, we've talked to a lot of people who didn't realize that there were sort of missing links in their financial chain and that they were leaving money on the table. Um, and we can alert people to that if you've, you know, linked a PRO and a distributor, but not sound exchange, and it's apparent that you should be registered with sound exchange, we'll let you know, hey, here's what it is and why you should be you know, signed up and registered because there's a black box where there's money sitting there for, you know, I think it's two years, but after that it's gone. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you yeah. know, just having that baseline of, okay, we have all of our bases covered. And then once you have that in place, being able to see the way the financial impact that each of those different, um, you know, partners, you know, and especially when it comes to distribution, you're likely to have one PRO. Mm -hmm. But you might shop around and try four, five, six, seven different distributors for different projects. And that creates an even more complicated web sure of information that you need to track. So, you know, to have it all in one place allows you to have that flexibility if you care to, or if you find a distributor that you love, then that's great too. And again, we're totally independent in that we're not asking for any rights. We don't offer those sorts of services. We're not Understood. distributing. We don't do pub yeah. admin. We don't do any of that. We are an independent entity that is uh, just giving you a different viewpoint of the data that at the end of the day is the own is owned and you know controlled by the artists and and their yeah. teams i've never seen anything like this this is why it's so um interesting to me because there's so many of these different things that you mentioned and it gets more complex complex when you have co-writes when you're a solo artist and then you're in a band or you're on a label and then you're not and you're doing it yourself or vice versa so there's all these different levels of complexity and it sounds like hi-fi is a way to kind of take all of these different things and then kind of see them all in one place now this is really more about educating getting the data so you can make good decisions about your business you're not actually like collecting these uh, revenues, correct? Well, that's where our cash flow service comes into play because- That's a good, and, good segue and, then. And, and to be clear, the royalties dashboard is available, if I haven't mentioned already, it's complimentary to our members. Um, and that, that, as I was saying, the dashboard really is the engine that allows us to offer other financial services, one of which is Hi-Fi flow, which um, in simple terms, uses that dashboard to inform us to what you're likely to make in the next year. And then instead of a lot of different options that are out there now in terms of a one-time advance, exchanging of rights, we simply offer you a portion of what we project for that year, twice a month, like it's your paycheck. Like it's like almost like you're on salary. So, yeah. you know, because you know, for those who don't know, just because all the different payment cycles are different across your different partners as well, you might get paid twice a year by your publisher and quarterly by your PRO and monthly by some distributors. Right. And then some distributors, you need to actually activate the payment every month. It's, it's sort of all over the place and it it's ends complex. up where things can really line up so that not only do artists sometimes get maybe 40 or 50% of their annual revenue falling in one month, and then months that follow that where they're getting little to no revenue, right? Because right. just the way that the payments line up, we can actually offer a guaranteed, de you know, dependable, predictable um, cadence of payments that hit twice a month. And every dollar that we collect on top of that guaranteed payment just flows through like bonus money. So you're not betting against yourself and you're not giving up any of your rights, but that's where, you know, in exchange for, smoothing out that income and collecting all those royalties on your behalf, we take a 2% administrative fee in exchange for that service. And those things are not tethered together in the other direction. You can absolutely use the dashboard and not take advantage of the cash flow service. But if you want to use cash flow, you need to use the dashboard because that is, as I was saying, you know, it's sort of the, the springboard for the rest of the services that we offer. And this can all be done through an app on your phone or your tablet, or you can do it on the desktop, right? You can do it right now. It's mobile only. Oh, it is um, mobile the, only. The, okay. dash, the dashboard is mobile only. And it, that was important to us because A, it, it 
it sort of forced us to make it as simple and intuitive as possible. But sure. be, beyond that, you know, what we really heard from managers and artists was we're doing business on our phone, right? Like it, we're going to be checking it more on our phone than we would be we, on We live desktop. on our phones. We live yeah. on our phones. You know, when I'm texting with my clients, when they're asking me questions, most of the time it's on mobile. So yeah. Um, we started with a, a, a mobile interface um, for the dashboard. And, you know, as we develop sort of more uh, elaborate or uh, sort of customizable functionality, there is likely to be a, uh, a time when a desktop version makes sense. Um, there's right? demand for it. There may not be. Like you said, I mean, we, we live on this. So the royalties dashboard and cash flow are both like off of the phone primarily? Yeah, the, the cash flow service is a bit more hands-on in terms of just, you know, the back and forth just to make sure that everything's buttoned up and, you know, that expectations are really clear and all those things. Um, but you can indicate interest in cash flow and generate a proposal right from your phone. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about the onboarding? So let's just say I'm a manager, I've got a dozen um, artists, underneath mm -hmm. and I would love to get involved in this. I can see how each individual artist, they already have their logins, they already have their connections to kind of set this up. What if you're a manager and you've got multiple artists, what's that onboarding like? So it is a very similar uh, process as it would be sort of for an individual artist or a manager who wants to get a viewpoint for one artist. And one thing that has been a big takeaway from this year is, you know, we announced that membership applications uh, were open at the beginning of July of this year. And, um, you know, we built the, uh, the, the dashboard, the mobile dashboard, initially to address, you know, sort of that one-to-one, -one, here's the clear viewpoint of one artist's earnings. And one thing that has been uh, really interesting to see is the demand from managers to, as you're saying, have larger clients or even artists who have many different projects um, and want to be able to track all of those things. So, um, you know, we are, uh, working right now on building that sort of functionality where you can individually tag um, or sort of, uh, you know, uh, customize the viewpoints of individual, uh, whether it's, you know, individual accounts within one service, individual yeah. artists. So you could have that customized look. And if you want to, you can glide across and see individual artists. You could just see all of your performance royalties across your roster. Yeah. Um, that's the sort of functionality that um, we're building out sort of as we speak. Yeah. Um, and in the meantime, the, the dashboard um, in, you know, on December whatever it is today, December 3rd, <laughs> right. um, you know, if you want to, as a manager, put those uh, different artists into sort of one dashboard and you have the ability to know sort of which artists, which songs, uh, it's, it, we've heard from a lot of people that it's actually really clear being able to track those things on one dashboard on mobile. Um, but again, like we're striving to make it as easy so that if you're whether a manager or even a business manager that's maybe working with dozens of clients um, yeah. will, you know, have solutions that allow you to have those customized viewpoints and be able to glide across your clients um, as, uh, as seamlessly as possible. That's really interesting because we're so used to these days, you know, Apple Music for artists, Spotify for artists, Amazon Music for artists, whatever it is being able to add somebody as admin or add somebody as a team member, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. I would imagine you're baking in that sort of um, functionality. So if I'm a manager and I have a team, I can maybe invite some other people on. Is that accurate? A absolutely. Or be able to customize different views for sharing for different people. Because obviously, if you have multiple clients, you probably don't want certain clients to see other clients' financials. Fair. And, right. And that's that sort of thing. So, um, but absolutely, um, that sort of, uh, sort of uh, flexibility is, is really key, especially because, you know, as the, the release cycles have really accelerated, there's more collaboration, um, you know, the individual artists have more complicated uh, careers on the back end than ever. Yeah. 
um, and making it as easy as possible to glide across those things and to offer different permissions and to play nice with accounting software. Those are all things that, you know, we've heard uh, loud and clear from our members, mm -hmm. uh, which at the end of the day is, you know, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it is really our North Star sure. for a lot of these decisions is gotta be. Hearing, hearing from them, you know, what are the most pressing things that you'd like to see? And so those are some of the things that have, uh, we've heard loud and clear throughout the year. Yeah, so you've basically got two main products. You've got royalties dashboard, which anybody can just go and and get, and and there's a solution right there that will give them all sorts of insights and kind of aggregate some of these things for them. And then you have cash flow, if they want to go a step a little bit further and really start to kind of take control of how those payouts are made. And, and I think you mentioned that that happens every couple of months, those payouts. Am I, is that right? No, twi twice a month, almost twi like oh, if twice you were a month. twice a month. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and, and that stability is really key because they're, as I was saying, you know, what we are not is that break glass in case of emergency, one-time cash infusion where, gotcha. you know, there's, there's going to be a significant trade-off in terms of giving up rights or some sort of, you know, usurous, uh, you know, fee or percentage tacked on interest rate tacked on to it. For us, what we kept hearing from our, from our community was it's, so valuable to have that guaranteed dependable flow of revenue so that you know that you know come hell or high water every two weeks or so here's that amount that's coming in yeah and they're not there are no more desert months no more surprises about what those amounts are going to be and since we have uh the ability to pass through any any amount that uh exceeds that guaranteed payment as sort of bonus money almost so you're yeah. still whole you're not betting against yourself and you know for us you know you can take advantage of cash flow and still take an advance if you wanted to as long as we're aware of it mm -hmm. um if you wanted to you could even throw that in and have a smooth that out if you don't want to have you know a big chunk of money lying around you might you know, blow through too fast or you want to yeah. make sure that you can stretch it out and you know you can then start to plan around okay, now I can hire that digital promo person or I can hire that publicist. I know that we're going to be okay to get through, you know, the next, you know, many months because we have this dependable check that's coming and hitting like clockwork. Yeah, that uh, makes a lot and of I, sense. I, and, you know, from a manager's perspective as well, not having to wait ages to commission, you know, as well is something that is a big plus. Well, just and having the transparency and just knowing, I think, is half the battle. You know, whether you take advantage of, you know, pulling that is, is a whole nother thing. But I think there's so many of these different sources. And I, as I was reading the Forbes article, I realized that, you know, they don't really talk to each other. They, they're they not really connected. So it's really incumbent upon you, let's say the artist manager, to take all these different sources and to make sense of it. And some people are very good about that. Others, maybe not. Um, who are your kind of ideal partners? Is it more of a a management company that has a lot of different artists? Is it um, just the artists themselves. We welcome anyone who's a rights holder in music to apply for membership and anyone who is a professional where they're making a living or on their way to making a living um, from activities in the music industry are great candidates for membership. Um, you know, within our community, we have a lot of artist managers. We have a lot of art, you know, artists who want to have that, you know, sort of direct level of ongoing transparency for themselves. Um, but, you know, we're also working um, hand in hand with a business management community to figure out how yeah. we can apply the same, um, you know, technologies and sort of data engines that we've built to assist that side of the industry as well. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, we're not replacing, you know, the the, the folks who can give you an advanced exchange for rights, they offer services that are going to be a great match for a lot of artists that we don't do. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not, uh, we're just trying to offer optionality 
that current on the in terms of a new way to access working capital, a new approach that up to this point, you know, we thought was uh, a missing uh, piece of the picture. Got it. Are there any entities which you're currently partnering with or maybe on your roadmap to partner with, whether it's A2IM or Music Business Association or Grammys or any of these groups that traditionally bring music um, business people, whether it's artists, managers, labels, distribution, publishing, that bring those people together? Are you... Is that on your roadmap? Any of these partnerships? Are you there with any of them? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have um, had a really busy year, but we've also done our best to be as active just in the music industry community as we can be, whether it's hosting our own events or, you know, joining HYM as a member or, you know, looking forward recently, we had some members of our team join Women in Music, which is a fabulous organization. Sure. Um, recently did a chat with the folks from the Music Managers Forum US and Nita and Wesley and those guys. And, you know, we're doing anything that we can to not only let the folks who would get value from what we've built know that, you know, we're here, and the, that we're ready to support them in their endeavors <laughs> and, and, and give them those services if, uh, if it seems to be a fit, but also just to find ways to you know, have more conversations and to accelerate these learning curves because yeah. there are a lot of people who are, you know, have the same sort of passion for finding these artist-centric uh, approaches, whether it is in the financial realm or any other realm of the industry. And, you know, we always look forward to opportunities to, to collaborate and, uh, and join forces where that makes that's, sense. That's fantastic. I can tell you just from my selfish kind of uh, vantage point, you know, I run labels. My company runs labels for people traditionally uh, management companies. We work with a lot of managers and artists and this is a pain point for a lot of them. And I think you nailed it at the very beginning of the conversation in that when touring was rocking and merch sales and all of the ancillary businesses there, we were putting out the fires in front of us and we we're focused on, on all of that. Now that that's been delayed for a moment, we're starting to look around at these other things and go, well, what about this? And this is one of those maybe you know, everybody's afraid of what they don't understand, but it sounds like this hi-fi is a way to take some of these maybe complicated kind of revenue streams and simplify it, make it visual, make it so you can understand it. And then if you want to move from royalties dashboard to cash flow, you could even start making this a regular kind of predictable revenue source. And I think that's what's so appealing about streaming in general is that we kind of went from this, this age of this undulating kind of uh, revenue to now it's more predictable. And now people are getting involved in investing in it because it's more predictable. And do you find that that's kind of the case with what you're working at, that people are now, they, they're now focused on a little bit. It's a little bit more predictable. Now, what do I do? Absolutely. And I think that you just, you just touched on two things, which are kind of different problems that we're approaching. One is just visibility, right? Seeing all of this, all this information that really is meaningful in terms of your bottom line and how you're building and, and growing your business, just see, first visibility, seeing it. But this, the powerful piece to me is seeing it within the context of everything else, because seeing just one piece of the pie on its own, you can, you can certainly get a lot of value from that. But it's when you start to see how these things relate to each other and where not only where you can double down on what's working, but as importantly, where there's room for improvement, where are the relationships that you can build? If, right. if right. you know, um, if you see all that information that you had peaks and valleys in terms of your earnings, and you can tie that directly into your, you know, your marketing initiatives and all the different strategies that you're putting in place, or even the cadence that you're putting out music, whatever it might be, yes. there, are, there are a lot of, um, you know, insights that you can pull from that information once it's put together and presented in a way where anyone can make sense of it. And um, so, and, you know, definitely, I think that in terms of 
streaming numbers and that sort of predictability. And you know, you're certainly seeing a lot of folks who are taking really interesting approaches in terms of you know how you can uh, whether advance money against those streams or whatever it might be. Like there are people who are doing very interesting things and. Um, you know, as I was saying before, we're all about having as much optionality for the artist and management community as possible. Yeah. And we hope that everyone has wild success, you know, with these new initiatives, yeah. um, because, you know, for the folks who want the, the stability and guaranteed access to working capital that we can offer, great. For folks who need, you know, flexible advances, you know, whether that's from individual partners who are offering advances against that sort of one revenue stream or folks who are approaching it from sort of uh, maybe more of a mathematical perspective or whatever it yeah. might be. For us, the more options there are, um, it's going to be better for the artists. It's going to make us all, you know, really think about, you know, how we can address the needs of artists and managers and, as well. But um, I think that with the predictability of the streaming revenue um, in particular, um, it definitely does unlock a different mindset that you can approach to these things. Yeah. And, you know, when you can look back and now that we have enough uh, sort of historical information, you know, streaming's been around for, you know, yeah. a decade plus at this point. Yeah. So you can see the trends that can lead to some of these new ideas versus, you know, back in the day when it would be like, the gut reaction of an ANR and maybe a bidding war is how you get a big advance. You know, yeah. there's there's a lot of different ways to build an audience, and I think that the hopefully we'll see more and more optionality and flexibility in terms yeah. of the way that people can, you know, turn that into deals that they're happy to to yeah. you know jump into. You and I have both seen some really great ideas in in the music industry. I think one of the things that kind of separates what you're doing and is most appealing to me is you had mentioned earlier that there are like events and workshops. And, and let's be honest, you know, some of these things that you and I may deal with every day that like sound exchange, for example, is pretty cut and dry. But to some folks, they're not even aware of what sound exchange is. They may not know the difference between, you know, the master and the publishing that we talked about. The level of education, it's this huge bell curve. And what I, I took away from what you were saying is you're providing the, this platform, which is very compelling and solves problems that are already in the, in the space. But if you don't really understand all of these things, it sounds like HiFi is going to make sure that that's available to its users as well. Can you speak to kind of the events and workshops a little bit? Because that sounds really compelling to me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's a big focus of ours because in order to maintain, you know, these ongoing relationships with our members. And as I was saying before, really, you know, get as much feedback and, and input as we can to really help determine which way, uh, you know, the ship is going, you know, and that really has a direct <laughs> impact on our, on our roadmap and what we're focused on. You know, a big piece of nurturing that community is through events. Um, whether it is member only events where we bring in experts to talk about everything from, you know, how to build your own, um, you know, uh, streaming concert series on a Shopify stack and hold on to all your data and how to build merch bundles around that, um, which we did recently, or, you know, how, how to navigate specific companies, um, whether it is a sound exchange or, or any of your partners. We've had a number of uh, sort of leaders from these companies come in and, and we have the advantage of since the, the organization is comprised of industry professionals, we can really have a high level of, of discourse. You know, we can jump into the details. You don't really need the 101 stuff, which when you're doing a webinar with thousands of people, um, you know, sometimes you got to set the stage and that's, that's totally fine. There's a time and place for, for that type of experience as well. But for us, it's everything from member only events, um, you know, hopefully next year we can get back to doing some of the things we were doing in terms of yeah. dinners and things like that. But we've even sure. been doing, you know, member dinners where we share prototypes of ideas and, you know, send folks seamless gift cards and, <laughs> and like try, try and, you know, make a vibe, even if it's through a, a computer camera. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, we bring in folks who inspire us to talk to us on 
um, Instagram Live. That's been great. We we pull in uh, charitable elements as much as we can. So you know we've had whether it's artists like JD Sampson or um, even you know friends of ours from Sound Exchange, Linda Blasbaum joined us recently. Um, you know, it, but the the idea is to really um, share the information that's going to have a direct impact on what our members are aware of so that they can maybe take a different approach to yeah. not just how they're approaching uh, uh, one of their partners, but really uh, uh, connect the dots and, and create direct communication lines between our members and the organizations who often want to have closer relationships with their clients and with the folks that are working with them. And it's, it can be a tricky thing to figure out the best, you know, sort of platforms to do that. Um, but that's something that is a big focus of ours. Hopefully we can get the physical side of it back in because we were having, you know, performances and yeah, we'll you know, get listening back, parties though. and all that stuff. And, yeah. you know, it's been, you know, both the challenge, but also the fact that, you know, we're based here in New York, but we've been able to have really great conversations with folks across the country um, in yeah. a way that's, you know, we've been put in a position where that's just the reality. And that's one of the silver linings is, um, you know, maybe there are a few silver linings, not many, but yeah. one is that it really has um, brought a lot of uh, folks into the events that we're putting together and the, a sort of the member only events and the workshops and all of those things from across the country. And we'll start, I think, you know, there are a lot of things that are going to stick, whether it's the way that a company like ours is connecting with our community, whether it's how artists are approaching live streaming and like really sort of reassessing how to build the creative around a digital experience. A lot of those lessons are going to carry through into the future and the stuff yeah. that is, you know, yeah, only because of, you know, the pandemic will remain in the past, but there are going to be these, uh, these takeaways and the fact that yeah. we've been able to, you know, invite folks across the country, we certainly will uh, not forget that moving forward. It's really exciting. And, and I got to tell you, you know, when I first read uh, about the company, it, it was a little dry. And I, it was just kind of some facts and figures. And it wasn't until I read the Forbes article where it kind of came to life. And I got to be honest with you, you know, having this conversation with you today, the as soon as we're done with this conversation, I'm going to go grab it and I'm going <laughs> to connect, nice. some, uh, connect some accounts. And if it's okay with you, um, I will ping you back and let you know of my experience. But I work really closely with a lot of artists and managers and this just seems like it solves a pain point, a, a problem that we all talk about a lot and adds a little bit of transparency and a little bit of knowledge and can just help us manage our, our business. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and, and talking through this. Where can people learn more about Hi-Fi and where can they... Can people reach out to you? Are you on socials where they can kind of contact you? Where, where can people reach you, Will? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can get more information at hi.fi. That's H-I dot F-I. Um, that's the whole that's the whole website. Best URL ever. Um, you can follow us on Instagram as well, where you know you can you know keep tabs on the broadcast that we're doing and the events that we're doing. Um, that is just at HiFi on, on Instagram. That's a great place. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter and Facebook, of course. Um, you know, you could reach out to me directly, will at hi.fi. Oh. I would be happy to hear from you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, as I was saying before, if you are a rights holder, if you generate royalties from music, um, check us out. Uh, feel free to apply for membership. Um, you know, drop when you, uh, when you submit that you heard about it on the pod. Um, we certainly yeah. will notice that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing your experiences, Jay. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone else who is listening, look forward to, uh, to connecting with you as well. Awesome. Will, thank you so much for your time today. Continued success. Great job. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value.